Hello everybody. Wanted to make a video here about this. Um, I actually discovered this about three days ago on Marino Delfino. It, the name of the video is called The Thing Draco Archon Brain Parasite. Now, I don't want you to think I'm trying to steal his work and redo it or take credit or anything like that. I just, this, this particular video, the information in it seemed so vital that I pass it along. I really think that this, this needs to be spread, this information here, I believe. It, it, and when you see it, you'll, you'll know. And you, if you've already seen it, you already know that, uh, I can't find that thing anywhere. I've looked. Uh, I, I've looked at every kind of insect, every kind of bug, every pupa, larva. There's, it's, there's no way around the fact that what this video shows is definitely an alien parasite, a parasitic alien brain worm basically is what it is I imagine it bores into your pineal gland and then it starts it, it hijacks your reality your consciousness it, it, it hijacks your experience everything everything you perceive is energy flowing through your pineal gland is causing you to have this life experience well Okay, think of your head as a radio or a television or a transmitter. And think of your pineal gland as the antenna. If, if somebody comes along and plugs a wire into the antenna to feed it alternative vibrations and energy instead of what it's supposed to be picking up, then you get a hijacked reality which is what is going on and this is how they are controlling people with these Archon brain parasite worms. Now before I play this video I want you to hear what uh, the video description I want to actually read this to you. Published on January 31st 2014 The Thing. Awesome info here. X strange insectoid with alien gray head and sharp teeth found in London, UK. You can actually see the mouth on it with teeth. Uh, WTF is it? According to Bro Thub Tendakapa, hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is what he states on his website, which I will link up in the bottom. The thing even has horns that is a serpent that is a beast that is the draco reptile those are currently in many heads and all to ill effect devil worshipers love that thing because it makes them rich and famous this is the snake on the crown of all the egyptians it lives in human heads and controls them it is literally the satan serpent that is the satanic serpent brain parasite that is in their heads controlling them. That is a Draco reptilian brain creature and they live in RuPaul's head in the Templar's ritual kissing the anus. That was the ritual where it would jump from one satanic ass into another's demonic mouth. Look at the pharaoh crowns. Look at those snakes worming out of the foreheads. That is the serpent, satan, reptile snake in the head in all of them. So they did mummification to come back in the right bodies. Praying mantis or praying mantis aliens. They are even fewer reports of a praying mantis type alien. They are usually seen in the ships with gray or reptilian aliens but seem to be in charge or command. 
The praying mantis got its name because when it feeds, it looks like a man praying with his hands together. This begs the question, who taught man to put his hands together when he prays to God? When we give our love and devotional energy when we pray, is it being devoured by a praying mantis type alien? The ancient Gnostics text found in Nag Hammadi speak of a type of parasitical entity that controls a man's thoughts. This appears to be the inspiration for the pilot episode of Star Trek, the original series, as well as the episode from Star Trek Voyager in which an alien presence invades Captain Janaway's cerebral cortex and poses as her father in order to convince her she is dead so that the alien can feed off her energy in its light matrix. Researcher John Lash, L-A-S-H, has a lot of material about the mind parasites called archons the little gray archons or archon aliens and mind parasites from the biblical serpent who tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to the Sumerian accounts the Bible also describes Satan as a dragon and I hit his final closing statement which he shouldn't be embarrassed at all. It says, I am embarrassed seeing what I wrote to you is horrific. It's like not so psycho battle. It's so surreal, yet it's all true. All too true. Uh, except Jesus as your Savior. By Marino Delfino, London, February 2014. Um, don't be embarrassed, man. This is truth. This is something that you're not going to find anywhere anywhere else truth is hard to find very rare commodity very dangerous thing to have uh, yeah so okay I'm gonna play the video now so you can see what what we're talking about just wanted to get that little preface there so everybody knows this is Marino Delfino I did not create this I do not know where this video came from the original video is right here as far as I know. I can't find the source in London that has discovered this or where it came from. I do not know. So I am just, all I'm doing is relaying information that I found pertinent that I believe you should at least examine. Here we go. How about a little sound? can identify this I don't think you can I've been looking for it for three days on the internet 
I cannot find anything that even looks similar. I mean, it, it, I could see the head being a praying mantis, possibly some giant ant, but it, it's uh, something's not right with it. I've never seen anything like that before. Ever. Look at that thing. That has got to be a mantis, reptilian, insectilian, gray alien. That is some kind of... I do believe this is exactly what that man says it is. I think it's a brain parasite that they put in these people. And it is, the, it is an actual demon that burrows into your pineal gland and controls you it hijacks your intellect and turns you into a pawn of Satan look at it, it looks evil it's not a worm that is the head of a carnivorous creature, it's got teeth it's got teeth and a mouth and it's got intellect because it bites at that finger. Watch it bite the finger. It, it snaps at the finger like a dog. It's got jaws. And it's strong. Look at it. It is really working around. Look at it. Watch it. See it open its mouth in defense to the finger. You know, I'm sorry. I can't find any insects or worms like that. I believe that it is what they say it is. I believe that it is a demonic entity. And that is the part that, that they put inside of you. That is the biological part of it. So, uh, going to give a couple more clips on this video and then uh, I'm going to post it. Thanks for watching. John Priest will encase his body in deadly armor. Now he will drain his blood and damage his brain with mysterious green liquid. The ranks leeches. It'll kill anything it meets. Oh, <laughs> oh,
types of development and the first type of development is a metabolist development and that just means that the insect when it's really really small and just hatched looks exactly the same as the adult except it's smaller like exactly the same you could not tell the difference between the baby and the adult except one is really tiny and only your microcorypha and thysanura really have this. Some of your basal hexapods have this as well. Please note that this term does not apply to anything that isn't an insect. So while spiders look exactly the same as, as they do when they're an adult, as they are when they're a baby, they technically don't have a metabolist development because this term is coined specifically for insects. The next type of development is porometabolist development. And porometabolist development means that the insect looks basically the same as it does as it's an adult, but there are certain characteristics that grow in slowly as the insect matures. So for example, ovipositors and wings will form gradually as the insect grows up, basically. And a lot of times the young will look really, really similar to the adult, if you think of your grasshoppers, for example, but sometimes the young can look really, really different, even though they still have this kind of development. And good examples of that are your, like, heteropteran, so all of your true bugs pretty much have this development, but don't look always very similar to their adult form. The next type of development is hemimetabolist development, and this basically just means that the insect has two very distinct stages, although there is no pupil stage, so it's not complete metamorphosis. But this is things like your dragonflies and your cicadas, something that has a very, very different nymphal-looking stage before it emerges into a full adult. And this is really, really great if you're this kind of insect because that means that your young and your adult stage live in two different niches and in two different habitats so you don't have to compete with your offspring. And that's pretty helpful, you know, if you're an insect and having to compete all the time. And so again, some good examples are dragonflies and cicadas. The final kind of development is holometabolist development, and this is complete metamorphosis. Everything else is incomplete metamorphosis. In holometabolist insects, you have a very distinct larval stage and a very distinct pupil stage and a very distinct adult stage. And again, this is really good, similar to the hemimetabolist insects, the adult and the offspring don't compete for